Good morning. Who can guess where we are? Obviously in Jerusalem. I'll give you another clue. If you look through the trees, what do you see? You see the Dormition Basilica at Mount Zion. So if we're looking east to the sunrise, then we must be west of the old city, here beside the windmill. Which is a well-known landmark for most visitors to Jerusalem. When you bus around the city once, most guides will point it out. And it was actually built to provide for this village out here, which was built by a fellow called Montefiore. And that those are very nice streets to walk. But let's focus right now on the sunrise. This was called the Solomon Hotel. I see a different name now, Castillo, because it's beside King David. So you have all these cactus here, cacti, and many other plants in this nice garden. So we're on the, the west side of the Gehenna Valley, which wraps around along the west side and down the south side of the city into the Kidron Valley. We'll get a better glimpse of that shortly. This part here, if I remember correctly, it's the while since I've been here, was dedicated by the King of Spain I'd have to check and verify that. There's some uh, sign to that effect here. But I don't see it. Maybe it's further up there, possibly. So let's go in here just to peep into the Gehenna Valley and to see the old city from another angle. At sunrise in Jerusalem. So there you can see the wall stretching back to the left. And there you see David's citadel at the Jaffa Gate. And now you see the St. Savior Church Tower on the extreme left there. And then you see the De La Salle School. And actually you can see, no, I'm speaking too soon. So we'll keep an eye out for another angle a little bit lower down. So we're looking into the Gehenna Valley here. Down there, all those cars are driving through hell. Gehenna is a symbol for eternal destruction, damnation. We covered some of the reasons for that in various times. The sprinklers are out here doing their work. Oh, here's the Spanish Memorial. If we have any Spanish friends looking here, Terraza de los Reyes de España. With all the different provinces of Spain Forty-eight years ago when I did my vows, I did a year in Spain. There you see Madrid Toledo, a famous city where actually, which housed the Shroud at one point, the Shroud of Turin. And there you have, uh, sorry, the, not the Shroud of Turin, the, the Sudarium of Oviedo, which is up here in the north. And then you have Madrid and just north of Madrid, probably due north is Salamanca. And there is where I spent a year doing humanity study, an ancient university city, ancient medieval university city. 
very famous for its learning back in the day. This is a nice picture here with this olive tree framing the sunrise here in Jerusalem. At sunrise, and here you have a little explanation saying that probably needs a little touch up. So we can handle those major features as we get a better spot to view everything. So we're coming around the the west side from Mount Zion. Today we have a challenging theme in the first reading for present day ears. And I have a suggestion of how to grapple with it. If we take it out of context, the context of its time, but also the context of the entire message. Why was Abraham so great? Obviously because of God's grace, but from his side, because he accepted God's plan, he trusted, he believed the faith of Abraham. We're, look at this beautiful olive tree in the sunrise here. Because he, he trusted and he obeyed. And the word obedience is not a word that we find palatable. We want self-affirmation. We want to affirm others. We want to shine for ourselves. It's wonderful that there's so much green here. It's a, a very well-cared feature here, thanks be to God. And then this is the Gehenna Valley. There's a big concert area right over here for concerts in hell. And then you can see the towers, the David Citadel in the center and over on the left, the Savior's Tower. And then that big building is the, the LaSalle School inside the walls of the old city. And actually I see one of the towers of Notre Dame just behind it from where we have done our live streams. Let me see if I can focus in there for you the De La Salle School. And there you see the tower of Notre Dame just to the left of the De La Salle School. And so then we're looking down into the Gehenna Valley and it goes way down here. Let's go down there. And here we have the Scots Church and Guest House. Some people are very devoted to that spot. And actually, it's, it was I think it was in the building of this or in something near here on this hill that the most uh, ancient text was found on a metal, a small little metal plate. And it was the famous priestly blessing of Aaron. And it's held with great esteem in the Israel Museum. And it's a beautiful text straight out of the Bible, but written on metal back in the day. Uh, they say it's, I think, about five centuries before Christ. So back at the time of, yeah, the exile around that time before the, after the exile. This is a very interesting monument. We won't be able to read it well now because of the, well, we can, but it's about turning, it's Isaiah's text of turning um, weapons into plowshares. So some artist, sculptor went to work and dismantling the weapons and putting them into plowshares. So the promise of peace for everybody, it's written in Arabic and it's written in Hebrew. And we can pray in our hearts right now that that peace will be a reality, just as Isaiah promised. 
but they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks to build life together for everybody. So then, how do we grapple with the text we have today about marriage in Ephesians chapter 5? And I suggest we take into account a few other very basic texts describing the life of a disciple. And Jesus says to us, if you want to follow me, take up your cross daily and deny yourself and follow me. Again, words that fall painfully on our awareness as liberated, independent, absolute freedom-loving monarchs in our own domains. And so the challenge of husbands and wives' relationship sometimes is allergically read with very critical attitude. But interestingly, the situation is mutual. But that line is off, often overlooked. This is the cinema here in Jerusalem. The only movie I, was, I saw in this cinema was One Rock, Three Religions by a marvelous Italian uh, director. And I'm trying to push my brain to bring out the name. But if you do One Rock, Three Religions movie or film, and this wonderful lady in Hollywood produced this very stirring movie. So we're going down into Gehenna. I'm not sure how far down I'll go because I have to keep an eye on the clock. Another line that's very important to take into, con into the context for understanding this passage is if you want to be the first, go to the last place and serve. And there we have a very interesting model. In, I would offer two major texts for it in, in Jesus himself who washes the feet. And that's a very good expression of the Philippians text about his lowering. He did not hold his privilege but emptied himself and became one like us. He became one like us in all things, but sin, even to the point of death and death on the cross, and that's only for love of us. So in that context, then this letter to the Ephesians talking to disciples of Jesus, how they should see marriage, and has a different light. So let's look at the first line of the text. It says, brothers and sisters, be mutually subordinate out of reverence for Christ. So it's not that the women should be subordinate to their husbands, period. It's mutually subordination. one to the other, serving each other. The ability to live together, which is so tested and tried in our times with great difficulty and many times great interruptions and sometimes hostilities and departures and breakups, the ability to live together will be service and not dominion based. And actually, the businesses that do best, and I was always, and I've commented before, they, I was impressed by this line that the gas company called Shell had on their logos when I got to the United States 40-something years ago, 45 years ago. Um, service is our business. What, a, what an amazing line. And... That's actually the business of marriage, serving the other, looking out for the best so the other person flourishes. And the ability to serve 
in difficult environments. And sometimes for some reasons of all different varying kinds, one person may not be able to serve because of illness, because of ill attitudes, because of certain breakdowns, because of all kinds of things. Maybe a difficult history. And therefore it's very important also to prepare well for marriage, not to rush in without mutual knowledge. Good discernment. But even with the best discernment, there are always surprises. And that marvelous commitment of love in every circumstance will be tested and tried, but it will be the path to growth because the more we are tested and tried in more difficult circumstances is when we really grow. Like the good coaches know with their best athletes, the best athletes go through the toughest trials but that's why they win the Olympics and the championships and persevere in all kinds of difficulties, sometimes with a health issue in between, a limb breakage that has to be repaired and rebuilt and recuperation, convalescence, and go out at, their, at the disciplines of the sport once more. A fascinating thing for me here is that Mount Sion is right beside the Gehenna Valley. The place of grace, right beside a fountain of evil. And that's fascinating because in our hearts, we can be a place of grace or we can, we can uh, go a wrong road. So there's a great call, I think, in this just local geography here to understand human condition and to grow and learn to bear the burden of each other in love, not out of just pure, I don't know what you could say, just sheer willpower, but out of love. People, this is a beautiful morning here in Jerusalem. Here across from Mount Zion, we'll say goodbye. Maybe we'll turn the sun around this way. We'll turn the sun around. We'll turn around for the sun so we can do our selfie goodbye moment here, looking at that pillar of peace. There we are. God bless you. There's uh, the sun over there and Mount Zion over here to the right. And there we got it all in the picture. Let's see if I can get it down that tight. Yeah, that's as tight as I can get it. So God bless you. See you later, alligators. And we'll finish off with the view of the sun beaming on this tower, this pillar for peace and understanding that plow swords will be turned into plowshares. God bless you. See you later, alligators.